up guys it's techno viking 23 coming to you today with one of my gaming ramble sessions i usually do these once a week usually i'd upload these on friday i didn't manage to get one up last friday because i was a little too busy so i thought i'd just kind of catch up a little bit let you guys know what's going on with me with gaming and everything else got a lot to talk about actually today so this may run a little long but just bear with me all kinds of things we're going to be uh, just kind of discussing and talking about having a couple things going on this week. Uh, the first bit of news, which is really, really good, is I actually did finally find a full-time uh, job. I had an interview um, on Tuesday that went really, really well, and they actually made me a job offer on the spot at the end of the interview. It was kind of funny. It was uh, down a little bit closer to downtown, and we were in this kind of nice high-rise building, and uh, there actually was a fire drill in the middle of the interview, so we had to evacuate the office, go down all the stairs, and go out through the loading dock, and it was really kind of funny. And um, uh, the, the people I'm going to be working for, it's a, it's a title company that I'm going to go work for to do some, uh, be doing some commercial title review, uh, which is basically what I was doing up north, uh, just in a different capacity. It's going to be, um, now I'm going to be doing uh, basically examining other people's work. So now I get to be the, the person in the office who gets to be the kind of the jerk going through everybody's stuff and, and making phone calls like, hey, you missed this, and where's this at? And I get to do the stuff that people did to me when I was uh, doing tie work. But I'm um, oh, yeah, just kidding. I'm not going to be a jerk. But um, got a nice tour of the office. Everybody that works there is really cool. Uh, it's very laid back, even though it's in a really nice office and really professional environment. It's kind of casual. Um, you know, I don't have to wear a suit or anything or get all dressed up for work. So, um, everybody was really fun. The interview process was really exciting, really went really well. So I'm really looking forward to, uh, starting there. I start on Friday. Uh, the only thing is it is going to be a full-time, basically 40 plus hour a week job, which is something I'm going to have to get used to again, going into the office. And, uh, I've got my own little office there with a really nice computer setup, uh, to where I'll be doing a lot of these review title reviews and things. So, Pretty exciting. Um, now, the one thing, of course, for YouTube is going to mean I'm not going to have nearly as much time to be making videos, uh, whereas I have been working these last few weeks, you know, helping out with the bike shop and things, uh, doing a little bit of retail sales here and there. Um, definitely not going to have as much time as I have been, so you may see a little bit of a break in content here and there. Don't get worried. I'm not quitting YouTube. Uh, I'm just, uh, I have a couple of videos also sort of uh, ready to go to upload, so I've got a couple still to put up while I'll be working and things. So, uh, but overall, very exciting. It's going to allow me to get financially sound uh, again and then kind of get back on my feet. And so it's a very good company to work for. They have very good job security there. Everybody that works there has been there for a very long time. Um, so just really, really excited to get back into it. And the other cool thing is, too, is they are pretty lenient on uh, what time you work. You basically, they what they told me is you just have to be in the office by, you know, by 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. There's really, really terrible traffic all over the place here. And uh, as long as you work eight hours a day, they're pretty much cool on you coming and going whenever. Like they said, there's people that come in at 6 a.m. and, you know, leave at 4.30 or 5. There's people who come in at, you know, 9 and stay till 6. And so uh, it's pretty flexible. And, you know, I'm not going to try to abuse that early on. I'm going to try to just kind of get a feel for the traffic going downtown uh, to get down there and see how long it's going to take me so I can figure out what time to get in. But I like that as I'm more of an afternoon person. I'm not really a morning person. So the fact that I can go in at 9 o'clock and stay till six and it was is fine with me i can definitely deal with that so anyways just want to let you guys know so i did find a a good full-time job and i'm very excited very relieved it's uh it's been a really rough uh couple of months almost four months now i've been out of work since july and it's it's been a really tough time but thankfully i've had a lot of stuff to keep me busy I was able to get that small retail job for a little while and um you know help also be had some more time to work on some videos uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue to work on that job because now I'm pretty much through the week, Monday to Friday, going to have to be uh, working full time. And, you know, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow, we'll actually uh, go in and work tomorrow. So I'm going to talk to them and see, you know, if they'll let me stay on and work weekends, I might try that just to keep making a little bit of extra money. But at the same time, if I'm working, you know, 40 plus hours a week, I'm going to now I'm going to want to have my weekends free so I can actually do things and uh, relax a little bit. So we'll see what happens. But uh, that's pretty much it on the job front. That's the exciting, exciting news today. Um, I'm trying to think what else I was going to talk about. Well, you guys can probably see in the background of this video, uh, there's some kind of special gameplay here. This is a super. I'm actually playing Super Metroid in this video, and uh, one of the things I'm going to be starting to try to do a little bit of here in the next couple of weeks is going to be some like retro gaming um, with some Super NES games, and I'm going to do a 
playthrough of Super Metroid, because this is like my favorite game of all time. So I'm going to do a, a kind of let's play, go through, play the game. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played this game. And I did pick up a couple other Super Nintendo games that I'm still trying to get used to playing again. It's, it's kind of funny, it's just so difficult to go back and play these older games and, and, and get used to the control scheme again. And, and also, it's funny, I, I'm finding a lot of these older retro games, difficulty-wise, are just so much more difficult and harder than a lot of the games that are coming out today that are aimed at a more casual audience and it's one of the things i really do miss about the older games is just the difficulty and how they didn't hold your hand you had to kind of figure things out and explore on your own so gonna be doing a lot of super metroid i've got maybe some un squadron and some other games i might play as well but uh be looking out for those um i had a really fun time doing the Mega Man 2 uh let's play so i figured it'd be pretty cool to do super metroid is it's actually my favorite game of all time. Um, I still have yet to find a game that I enjoyed as much as Super Metroid, and even though it came out in 1994, uh, it still sits atop my own personal um, all-time favorite games list. So I'm really excited to get the chance to go through and enjoy it again and play the game again and just have a lot of fun with it. So um, you guys are going to be seeing a lot of this game on the channel. So. Uh, that's pretty much it on that on that front. Uh, probably we'll do a little bit more Dragon Age Inquisition here and there. I actually have not been playing that as much uh, this last couple weeks or the last week or so because I've just uh, I've been really busy with work and some other stuff. So I haven't really had a lot of time to, to play games too much. But uh, between the Super Nintendo and the Dragon Age, that's pretty much what I've been playing. And also Star Wars: um, The Old Republic, which is also a Bioware game, uh, recently launched their new expansion, which was free to subscribers, and that was the um, Knights of the Fallen Empire. So I'm working on that. I have played through that a little bit. I'm thinking about even doing a Let's Play of that to kind of show people what's going on with the expansion in case they're interested. Because I do have, they give you one free token to basically uh, start a character at level 60 um, where you don't have to play through the class story. And I have a couple of characters I could play it on, but unfortunately a lot of them I still have to run through the Shadows of Revan expansion, which I absolutely hated and I don't feel like doing on any other character. So uh, I might actually use that token and, and just bump a character to level 60 and play through uh, Knights of the Fallen Empire to show you guys uh, what it's like. I got mixed feelings on it, as is pretty usual with Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, it's one of those rare Bioware games that's kind of like, eh, you know, it's just mostly, there's a lot of EA fingerprints all over it, and I really think they should have just, instead of making an MMO, they should have just made uh, Knights of the Old Republic 3 as, as this sort of a more open world game. Um, that and some of the complaints I'm having with Dragon Age Inquisition going through is I, I just don't think Bioware is very good at making these huge MMO type worlds. They just don't really seem to understand the concept of it. And that's one of the problems I've had with Star Wars The Old Republic is even though it's built as an MMO, I never really feel like it's an MMO. I think it's more like there's really amazing single player class stories in the game. But then when you get done with that, it's like, you know, what now? Like, it's just all massive fetch quests and not very good PvP and other stuff. So... Uh, it's one of those games where I've subbed for a couple months, then quit for like six or seven months, then come back to it and played all the new story stuff. And, uh, you know, that seems probably what's going to happen again with Knights of the Fallen Empire as I play through it. I'm just really seeing the same problem again with Star Wars The Old Republic. But one of the few Bioware games that's kind of hit and miss and has a little bit too much EA influence in it. And uh, even though Bioware is probably my last, like, favorite developer... Um, that I still I still really enjoy their games, you know, because I think with Bioware, you always do get a really good solid single player uh, game, at least. You get a lot of content, you get very good voice acting, you get you get usually a pretty in-depth, pretty solid story that's written very well. Uh, but it just is, seems they're not very good with multiplayer, with the exception of Mass Effect 3. Uh, the Dragon Age Inquisition multiplayer is really lackluster. I've got a video actually made about how, how bad it is and if it's even worth playing. And it's, it's actually not due to the multiplayer design. It's more due to the people that play it. But um, it's just, I don't know, comparing it to ME3's multiplayer, it's just very, very lackluster. And I'll probably be uploading that video over the weekend. Uh, but that's, that's about it. I'm also finding as I get into Dragon Age, the further I get into the game, uh, the more boring it gets. Like they've got these very, you know, I was really impressed with the open worlds early on in Dragon Age. And then when you get to the later stages of the game, they still have these massive open world maps, but they're just very empty and there's not a whole lot to do in them. So, you know, even though I'm a little bit of a Bioware fanboy, I still am definitely uh, have some criticisms of a lot of their games. Um, you know, I think they've they put out some good games and some some hit or miss games, but for the most part, Bioware is still pretty good. And uh, 
We've got In Seven Day coming up this weekend, which is a really exciting time. It's, uh, I mean, not really for most people, but uh, if you're a Mass Effect fan, In Seven Day is always kind of cool. It's, you know, Bioware always does some special things. They're doing some uh, pretty nice live stream for charity this weekend. And I'm going to try to at least upload a video on In Seven Day. Um, just talking about how I, how much I enjoy Mass Effect and how it's one of my favorite video game series and just what Mass Effect sort of means to me overall. Because I just, I love the series. It's a great game. Uh, despite the ending of Mass Effect 3, you know, a lot of people just, I, I see so many people who just flame and troll about how terrible Mass Effect is because of the ending of Mass Effect 3. And, you know, what I have to say to some of those people is, you know what, why, you know, the series was a three-game series. It was very enjoyable. Even Mass Effect 3 had some really good stuff in it. So, like, 95% of Mass Effect 3 is an absolutely amazing video game. It's like, why would you let 20 minutes at the end completely ruin the entire series for yourself? So, that's the way I look at it. I still, Even though the ending was kind of eh. And, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm talking about the updated ending they did for, as free DLC. I, you know, I didn't play the game until after all that stuff had come out. But um, I, I just think, I think Mass Effect is a great trilogy, even though the ending's a little lackluster. Um... I'm not going to let that ruin what was overall an incredible experience uh, for me with the game. So, um, And since we're on the topic of EA, that will bring me into a little miniature rant here. Um, I actually have been tr I talked about that in 7 video I was trying to make. I actually have been having some trouble making that video because EA has been really stupid this week. Um, I've been trying to get into Mass Effect 3 for the last few days and it keeps telling me the servers are unavailable, all this other nonsense. And then, once again, EA Origin was hacked uh, in October, towards the end of October, and I had to go in there and change passwords and set up all the verification again. It's just ridiculous. I, I, EA Origin has got to be the worst um, site with EA, with PC games, for anything. It's just terrible. They get hacked, like, every other week, it seems. Uh, there's always some nonsense going on with it. There's always some password nonsense going on. And I had some problems with Star Wars The Old Republic when I, tr I actually... Uh, got on the other night and I downloaded the new expansion. It took like two hours to get it. And when I finally got it ready to go and ready to play, I wanted to go in and they're like, oh, we don't recognize your computer. We got to send you this one-time password. And it does this every time, even though I've been playing on the same computer with Star Wars Old Republic for like five years now. It's like they always have this verification issue. So I have to wait for the email. Well, the email is supposed to take 15 minutes. Well, the email never comes. So I literally sat there for almost two hours waiting on this email. I sent a couple more requests in and it just... It finally showed up the next morning at, at, like, you know, 10 hours later. And when I tried to put it in, it was like, oh, it's invalid now. You have to get another one. And just went through the whole process again. So I've just been really frustrated this week with EA, with Origin. Um, I think it's the, one of the worst services out there. I think EA is just, um, you know, EA and Activision are, like, my top two terrible gaming companies. But, you know, I think Activision is just for their greed and their, their corporate greed and things. But with EA, it's like they just have so many problems with everything. Like, their customer service is terrible. Uh, some of their gaming practices are terrible, but the EA Origin website and all that nonsense is just awful. It sucks. It gets hacked all the time. And of course, EA denies it every time. They're like, oh, no, there was no leak. Nothing happened. Or just, you know, all everyone's information just magically appeared online places. You know, we don't know what happened. And they just pull this whole BS, like, oblivious attitude. And it's just funny. But, um, you know, that's why I said EA is kind of just... I don't know. Just really been frustrated with them this week, and this Mass Effect thing better clear itself up by this afternoon so I can get on there and play, because I want to play some multiplayer, and it's really kind of irritating. But uh, <laughs> So that's been uh, the EA Origin effect so far, and I did a rant video about that a couple months ago with when uh, I couldn't get on to Mass Effect 3, because they had this big thing they went through with the FIFA, the FIFA game, there was a big, big time hack, and people were going into everyone's accounts and buying all these gold packs and selling them, and they, what they ended up doing was banning your account, even though you weren't the one that was doing it. So I had to go through a whole mess with Origin there, tried to reach their customer service, and it was an absolute disaster. I might link that video down below so you guys can watch that. It was a, a long time ago, so um, that was pretty much it. So, But yeah, that's pretty much it with, uh, with gaming. Uh, not much else going on. Uh, just more stuff that's funny with Bungie and Destiny this week. Of course, we got the article that came out saying... That now Activision's, you know, CEO and everybody, they're all like, oh, we can do paid DLC and we can do microtransactions. And I think a lot of people were, were misled. You know, there's a Kotaku article a few weeks ago where it was like, you know, oh, they're going to do these microtransactions, but it's so they can do free DLC content like most free-to-play games do. 
And now it turns out, um, you know, that's not. Of course, Bungie never confirmed that, and I warned people when I when I was commenting on that article. I said, you know, uh, Bungie never said anything about this. You know, they've they've never, you know, they did kind of say in one of their weekly updates it may help them do, you know, content in the future, but they never came right out and said it. And of course, with um, Destiny, as I always say, guys, Activision has full control of the game. They're going to tell Bungie what to do. Everybody who thinks Bungie can actually fix the game and do what they want is completely oblivious or just a testicle. And uh, the game is, as long as Activision is in charge of the game, it's going to be pretty bad. Um, and then this is just, I thought it was really hilarious. Now they're going to want to do microtransactions and paid DLC. So again, this just shows kind of how greedy Activision is. And of course... Um, you know, but uh, they, they, like I say, a lot of times with Activision, with some of their games in general, with Call of Duty especially, is really they don't have to change. Uh, they don't have to change at all because people continue to support their games and people continue to just eat it up like candy. Um, you know, they, they had their quarter earnings results and everything, and, you know, they picked up another 5 million players on Destiny. People just keep playing the same crap over and over again, and they keep falling for it. Um, you know, the microtransactions are some of the highest selling. Uh, things on the PlayStation Store. Uh, it's just it's mind-blowing. Uh, the direction that gaming is going and the way that gamers are becoming such sheep these days and just supporting all these really greedy companies. So, uh, so yeah, fun times. Anyways, guys, that's about it for me. Uh, kind of a, I, I thought I was going to ramble a little bit longer, but I realized that's really all I've got to talk about. There's not much else going on. Just uh, really excited to be working again, hoping I can get this... Mass Effect uh, video done and get this these issues with EA resolved this weekend. Just get back on the servers. I don't know what their their deal is with that crap, but we'll hopefully get that done and be able to get uh, be able to make that in seven day video. But I hope you guys are uh, are doing well. Hope you're having a great week. I uh, hope you guys are looking forward to the weekend. I know I am. Uh, some college football as usual on Saturday. Just uh, but just happy to be gainfully employed again and not a drain on the economy. <laughs> so. I hope you guys are, uh, like I said, having a great day. Have a great weekend, guys, and I'll see you again next time.